This M-Series Think Center has an i5-650, which is a first-generation i5. Today, we will be testing out what the integrated graphics can do and what games we can play. Before we did anything, I wanted to open it up and see what it looked like inside, and this computer opened up a very unique way. Both the sides opened up, and we are in the computer. I will say that I've never seen a computer look like this before. Now that we're in the computer, the first thing I wanted to do was remove this hard drive which was connected on top. And now that that was removed, I wanted to just do a simple wipe down all over the computer, gain a lot of the surface dust off. And then I checked the RAM to see how much RAM we really had in here. And after checking, I saw that each RAM stick was 2 gigabytes each, totaling out to 8 gigabytes in this computer. Which is not bad since we're not going to have a graphics card in here, the 8 gigabytes shouldn't be a limitation for this computer. And now that we have checked that, our next step is to remove this CPU cooler, which is what I would have done, except I ran into the same issue that I kept running into, where the Incredible Hulk keeps screwing down these heat sinks and I cannot undo it to save my life. I do not know what it is, I just can't do it. Since we can't really do anything about this, I'm just gonna throw an SSD here. This should work out. I was able to get the computer to boot up, but I was running into this issue where it was establishing the link and saying that there was a media failure to check my cable and it kept doing that over and over and over and would not let me reboot from this screen. So I had to keep turning the computer off just to be able to try to get into the setup. And when I tell you that this took me half an hour just to get into this setup screen, I am not lying. I could not, for whatever reason, just could not figure out how to get into this setup. And it was just so confusing. I tried looking it up and everything was telling me F1, F2, F10, F12 repeatedly click it and everything and I ended up just having to spam buttons until I got this to pop up and it finally worked. So I'm so glad I was able to. Let's get Windows set up. The setup was honestly going pretty smoothly. I didn't run into any issues. There was no slow inputs or any lag or anything like that and it was like any other computer. The same thing with the Windows download. It was going pretty well and I'm really glad that we weren't experiencing any issues with me not having to repaste the thermal paste. And now that we're in Windows, I did what I do every time and I download all the Windows updates. These are very important and I would make sure to do these every time. The next thing I tried doing was I tried finding graphic drivers for the integrated graphics on this computer and I just could not find anything. Like no matter what I would do, I'd be able to look up and it would say Windows 7, Windows 8, and there was a couple for Windows 10, but it was only for special devices. I ended up trying to download the Windows 7 drivers for this, and it told me that I did not meet the minimum requirements for it, which was very confusing. And after a bunch more research, I ended up finding this forum that basically said that the only drivers for the integrated graphics are the ones that get updated in the Windows updates. So. We're just going to have to see how they do. As you can see, the i5-650 has two cores and four threads, was released in early 2001, and has a score of 2243 on CPU benchmark, which is honestly not bad. I've had worse CPUs that were newer generations in this, so that's not bad. The clock speed is 3.2 gigahertz, but it does boost up to 3.5 gigahertz. We won't be doing that today, but do keep that in mind. The first thing that I wanted to do with this CPU is just test out basic web browsing. I went on Wikipedia and just scrolled through a bunch of different articles just to see the loading speed, how well it loaded everything in, if there were any issues, and it ran perfectly fine. I did not encounter a single issue going through this, and I went through probably 10 different pages, maybe 20 different pages. The next thing that I wanted to do was just test out YouTube at 1080p and 4K just to see how it would run, and 1080p ran perfectly fine. I don't think it dropped a single frame, honestly. And 4K did pretty fine as well. It did drop a couple frames, and you were able to tell just a little bit that it was lagging just a little behind. But overall, I mean, it could be worse. Let's move on to some games now. Now the games I'm going to be testing aren't going to be the latest AAA games or anything like that. In fact, they're going to be pretty much indie games and smaller games. But this is just to show what it can run and what it can do if you're really stuck with this CPU and integrated graphics. But the first game that we have is Peggle, running at standard settings. We got an average of 57 FPS. I mostly just did this game just because I did not know what this CPU and integrated graphics were able to handle. So this was a good way to start off and see what it can do. The next game that we have up is Terraria running at 1080p medium settings. I did have to turn on the retro lighting feature, which does hinder the game experience a little bit. But overall, I mean, if it's playable, that's what matters. We're getting an average of 59 FPS with only a minimum of 55 which means that this was a very playable experience. I was lighting up caves, I was going around, and I mean, without this retro lighting, we were only hitting like 20 to 30 FPS, like within a cave, and 
You know, I had to turn the background off when I did that and it was still not helping that much. But overall, this was a pretty good experience. I would play it like this, honestly. Now we have Brawlhalla running at 1080p standard settings. We got an average of 58 FPS with only a minimum of 31, and that was just at the end of the game when everything was loading. So this was a very playable experience. There isn't an easy way to mess with the settings or anything like that, but that doesn't matter. We were having an amazing experience here, and I mean, I had a lot of fun playing this. There was a couple times in the menu where it did drop a lot of frames and it did lag a bit loading wise, but besides that, like I said, this was an amazing experience and this is something that, I mean, almost any computer can play, so. And the next game up we have is Don't Starve running at 1080p. I did have to turn on small textures because that did help out a little bit. We got an average of 44 FPS with a maximum of 49 and a minimum of 36. This was not that bad of an experience, honestly. I enjoyed playing this game when I was younger, and I mean, if you're wanting a smoother frame rate, I would suggest turning on netbook mode, which does cap your FPS at 30. But overall, this game ran pretty well. I mean, there's no need for the high frame rates or anything like that. And I mean, it's a simple survival game. The next game that we have up is probably the most graphically intense game, and that's Left 4 Dead 2, running at 720p low settings. I did have medium textures on, which did probably cause us to have the less than 30 FPS average. But I mean, overall, it was still a pretty decent experience. It's all right, I mean, I've definitely seen worse. I mean, for not having a graphics card, I mean, I know this game is very easy to run, but still, I mean, it still surprised me that I was still able to play this. The next game that we have up is Polybridge running at 1080p low settings. We got an average of 31 FPS with a minimum of 15, which honestly is not bad. This isn't one of the games that you need a lot of FPS on and I don't have any complaints with this. The only experience I would say is kind of bad is the fact that when you go into the menu to choose a level, it's like less than 10 FPS, but I mean, that's not necessarily needed. It's the game that counts. If you're wanting more frames rather than just 30, if you turn the settings down to 720p, I guarantee that'll push your frames up and it'll make this a way better experience. And the last game that we have today is Minecraft Beta 1.7.3 running at 1080p fast settings. We got an average of 38 FPS with a maximum of 57 and a minimum of 16. There was a couple stutters here and there, but I mean, what do you expect? We don't have a graphics card in here. I was wishing that we could have played a newer version of Minecraft. For whatever reason, I wasn't able to download it because it said that my graphics card does not support OpenGL, which it does. I'm running this game and all the other games, so I mean, it was just pretty confusing. Overall, this was a pretty good experience. I mean, this is definitely a slower machine and, you know, late game would not be that well, but this is such a simple version of Minecraft to where I don't think it really matters that much. Overall, I think this computer did pretty well. I mean, for it not having a graphics card, I'm surprised that half of these games even ran and even played. I mean, obviously, we're not going to be hitting amazing frame rates. You know, this is one of Intel's first integrated graphics with their CPUs, so but this just shows what it can do. I know that there's more I could have tried, like emulation and stuff like that, and I probably should have, and I was thinking of honestly getting into that maybe in another video. I don't have much experience with emulation. I remember doing it a bit when I was younger, but I need to really get back into that before I uh, make a video for you guys so it's not necessarily like the, uh, like the other operating systems video to where it's like I'm figuring out as I go. I kind of want to have a general idea before I start recording. But like I said, overall, this computer did well. I mean, this was my roommate's old computer, and I mean, it did better than I thought it would. If I was stuck with this computer, like if I was given a computer as a kid, and this was the computer I had, I mean, it would definitely be usable still, and I would definitely be able to use it. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys. If you guys liked this video, hit the like button down below, and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next week.